Even though this will come in handy with more complex structures, it's worth understanding what the free body diagram of the cables and the cable sections look like, as this is how we'll analyze internal forces within members. This is an excerpt video from the free body diagrams and particle equilibrium main video. If you'd like to check that 9 minute video to see the context of these forces subindices and two force members explanation, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Cable AB is subjected to the external force on one end and another force caused by the pulley in the opposite direction. Even though you'll find inconsistency between instructors, between textbooks, and even within the same textbook, a convention that will be very helpful for all future problems, especially when identifying if a member is in tension or compression, is using the subscripts to show the direction of the force. In this case, F from A to B, which is the external force F, will be labeled FAB. The reaction force that the pulley causes on A in the direction from B to A will have the subscripts BA. Notice that this is consistent with the forces on the free body diagram and that FAB is a reaction to FBA, equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Additionally, if the forces are pointing away from the body, they are said to be tensile forces. If they are pointing towards the body, they are known as compressive forces. What I mentioned earlier though, is that cables can only be subjected to tension, and so that's why cable and pulley problems are the easiest setup, as I previously pointed out. For two force members, which are members that are subjected to two forces, no moments, more on that later, and link below to the next main video on rigid body equilibrium, the forces can either be tensile or compressive. Remember how I just said that cables are easier because they're always under tension? Well, fortunately, the assumption that will make the analysis of a member much easier is that the unknown forces, or the forces we're trying to find, cause members to be under tension. If the variable we're solving for is positive, then the member was in fact under tension, and if the force yields a negative value, then it means that the force vector should point in the opposite direction, and the member is therefore under compression. This bodes well for the general convention that a positive internal axial force is tension and a negative internal axial force is compression. So even if a force should clearly be a compressive force and therefore drawn in a compressive direction in a free body diagram, like for example the reaction force at the wall of a cantilever beam that is being pushed towards the wall, we can draw it as a vector that is causing tension at the fixed end and when solving for it, we will get a negative value. The negative value would mean that the force is actually going in the opposite direction, therefore being compressive, as well as just telling us without drawing anything else that F21 or the reaction R is a compressive force following the convention for negative values of axial loads being negative. In a structure where it's less obvious to where the unknown force is pointing, like in this setup where we have the members shown connected to a gusset plate, we might not know for certain by quickly looking at it if the force OC is a tensile or a compressive force. For example, and you can also do this with the x-axis, since the 12 kN force OB is negative, that is, that the force in the direction from O to B is actually a compressive force that affects O from B, you might think that its component in the y-axis could be larger than 9 kN going up, and therefore FOC would have to be facing up upward and left, of course, so that its y component and 9 counteract the y component of 12. But again, just following the general recommendation that the unknown force will cause tension in that member, we should assume that FOC is pointing down. That way the subindices are also consistent. Writing our sum of forces in the y and x axis, and notice that we don't need to use slanted frames of reference here, we find two equations with variables theta and FOC. Dividing the equations we solve for theta, and substituting theta in any of them, we find FOC, which in fact yields a positive value. Again, by convention, positive means tensile. By looking at our free body diagram, we see that the vector direction is indeed in the direction that we drew, which also means that FOC is a tensile force. If you'd like to watch some two-minute video examples pertaining what we just went over regarding the four subscripts and two force members, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.